Hello, I'm Paul Wilson from Paul Wilson Images and today I'm going to show you how to make a panorama like this, kind of. So this is 126 shots taken with the Canon 6D and the 50mm Sigma Art. So uh, the detail is huge, it's a gigapixel so I'll just zoom in and show you. pretty big. So I'll show you how I developed the raw files, stitched them all together, then took them into Photoshop for some final adjustments. Right, now here is one of the developed files. So I'll reset it and put it, we'll uh, show you from scratch. Okay, whites always go straight up bit of vibrance, wee bit of saturation, drop the highlights. Now colour balance, this is personal taste really. I like images a bit colder, a bit more purple, but that's pretty good, something like a hit. Bit of contrast. So I've got all my files down here. And I've color labeled them so I know which series it's from. Bit of tone curve. Adds a bit more contrast. Maybe bring the whites up a fraction. This is for the foreground later. Foreground's going to need shadows lifted. But we'll sync this and then I'll show you what the foreground looks like. Still quite dark. So we'll boost those blacks up a wee bit too. We can see it a bit better. It's looking pretty good. Now noise reduction, what I get asked about a lot. I just apply 20 generally. Color smoothness stop the spot splotchiness around here. I'll just show you what nothing is. Profile corrections, the 50mm has minimal distortion and I let the stitching program do it, auto pen or giga. Tweak the colours a wee bit, a bit more saturation in those reds. Now I might pull some magentas out of the foreground. We'll sync that again. Head back and look at the sky. So that core is quite bright. These red dots are overexposed, meaning there's no detail there. You can bring them back a little bit more. And we're pretty much ready to export. So I'm going to reset it to the settings I did have before I exported last time. There we go. Just make sure those settings are synced. It's applied it to all the all the pictures. Now we export. So this is a Auto Pano Giga plugin. Export. TIFF 16, highest quality. Name the folder. Sixteen bit, no compression. Export. Now that's going to take a while, so we'll check back in in about 10 minutes. All those shots have finished exporting and they've auto automatically opened in Autopano Giga. So it just hit detect and it should match them all up nicely. But I used a Giga Pan to shoot it, I would never attempt it without one. 
So I'm going to import with the GigaPan plugin, which is very handy. So I shot rows upward, so across, bottom row, then the next row, then the next row, and so on. Shoot setup, I think it was about a 30% overlap. Doesn't really matter what you tell the programmer found. So find your files, control A, select them all, and import them. Let me try and make this bigger. So it's automatically detected it was 14 across by 9 high. It will look really weird if you, it gets it wrong. So now we finish and it will detect them. This might take a couple of minutes too. Correcting lens distortion. So it's a wee bit messy. So we'll click on move. We'll center it. They've got the automatic horizon option. It's not always accurate. Let's have a wee play, make sure it looks right. good for the sake of the tutorial okay now we will render you can also do lots of other things like mask you tell it which parts of the picture you want kept so I can say for instance if it was a selfie and I was here I would keep myself to make sure I wasn't overlapped by another picture So now we'll render it. These are my settings. I'll post them up. I'll post a screenshot so you can see them. Anti-ghost. Export full resolution. I'll just export it to the desktop. Render. Now I've shrunken the um, actual output files down in size. So this doesn't take too long. So it's not as big as it usually would be. Usually it's 50,000 pixels across. This is only about 5,000 that I'm exporting for the tutorial sake. Okay, the image has finished rendering, so let's open it up in Photoshop. And we'll fix any distortion like these stars, they're all stretched out. This is a bit flat, it's a bit weird looking. Select the rectangle tool says down here which tool I'm using if you need to know. Select the top half, layer via copy, You've got that layer selected, edit, transform, warp, and stretch that out a bit. Get rid of all those stars and it just looks way better. It's more like it. I will crop it 2.5 to 1. That's how I normally crop my 360s in Astro. Crop. Looking good. Now we'll add a bit more saturation and vibrance to parts of the sky. especially the horizon. So I've just clicked on vibrance, pressed it a bit, but we don't want that over the whole image. So select your mask, control I to turn it off, to brush tool, a low opacity, 27 or something like that, make it a wee bit bigger, white, now we're going to brush in that colour. It's 
See these mountains, they're way too blue. So we'll create another vibrancy layer. Drop the saturation. Control I, turn it off. And now we'll brush in no vibrancy or saturation on the mountains. I'm just going super fast, but you get the drift. So the Milky Way core, they, see these dust lanes, they're quite faint. It's good to um, make them a bit darker. It's all to personal taste, but this is what I like to do. So darken them down a lot with the tone curve. Now same as before, turn off the tone curve, control I. Brush. And just brush in those dust lanes. Ever so carefully. That's made a massive difference already. Don't miss or you'll get a horrible looking sky. Now we'll apply that flatten the image. There's lots of other things you can do. You can bring up the um, foreground brightness with the tone curve. You can go to the gradual filter gradient tool and it will apply to half the image as you can see in the mask. Thanks for watching, that was a super quick tutorial, I didn't want to make it too long. I'll post up some details, feel free to ask questions, I'm sure there's a few. Bye.